Hazel, Mary Smith, I've heard some funny alibis, but yours takes the prize. <laughs> you were waiting on a street corner for a man who was going to marry you. Are you sure he knew which corner you were going to be on? Well, you see, I had been standing on the corner some time when a man came along and asked me if I could use some money. He smiled so kindly that I thought perhaps he realized that I needed some. You see, I've been out of work a long time. But if you knew you were going to be married, what did you want money for? Well, I had waited so long I was beginning to think he wasn't going to come. How long have you been doing this sort of thing? Don't answer that. Tell him you got a sick mother in Kansas. <laughs> Order in the court. I told you the truth, Judge. But that was last night. Why hasn't he shown up? They let you phone your rooming house. He hasn't shown up there, hasn't even phoned. Well, I don't know. I, I guess something must have happened, but if you let me go, I'm sure you'll come back. Sorry, young woman. Your story is too thin. I shall have to... Just a minute, Judge. I'm the man she was waiting for. I got blotto last night and missed her. This morning I was still a little... Well, you know how it is, Judge. <laughs> Order in the court! Young man, will you please step inside the railing? Certainly, with pleasure. Say, hey, listen, was your story on the level or what? Never saw him before in my life. Well, that guy must be nerds. So you're the man Miss Smith was waiting for. Why didn't you speak up sooner? Well, see, Judge, I was afraid after being so late last night that she wouldn't want to marry me. She's a nice girl. Oh, charming. But temperamental. Decidedly temperamental. Do you know, Judge, she once told me... We won't go into that. Oh. Is this the man you were going to marry? Yes, Judge. Then, of course, you know this man very well. Yes. What's his name? Uh, she calls me Jimmy, Judge. My name's James Martin, but she will call me Jimmy. Please be still. Don't answer till you're asked a question. I'm sorry, Judge. It's my impulsive nature. I thought you wanted to know my name. Mr. Martin, did you by any chance ever play a game called poker? Oh, often, Judge. Anyway, two or three times. Well, I'm going to call your bluff. Are you ready to marry this girl? Certainly, Judge, certainly. If she'll have me. Mary, will you marry me? Yes, Jimmy. Well, I'm a dirty so-and-so. I don't care what time he comes home. Jimmy Martin's up to no harm, Argent. I know that much. Oh, Mrs. Perkins, he's having his bit of fun, I guess. And I can't say that I blame him. Here, look what they're marrying him off to. Stiffish piece of good, you know. But, Argent, she's a very proper person. A real lady. Only Argent. Yes? Well, I like them to be ladies, but not too proper. The proper ones are odd on a man. Well, his mother seems to think that Miss Marge is the right kind for him. You know, he's a queer kind of a lad, Mrs. Perkins. A bohemian, I calls him. Always mix him with the working classes. That's why they're marrying him off. Hodges. Uh, yes, my lady. Have you heard from James? No, my lady. He wasn't home all night. I think I'll call the police. Oh, beg your pardon, my lady. May I suggest? Well? Oh, I wouldn't call the police, my lady. It has a way of getting into the papers. Oh, very well. But if you hear from him, report to me instantly. Yes, my lady. Oh, uh, Hodge. Yes, my lady. Have you tried to find him? Oh, yes, my lady. I've called up all the speakeasies. Don't be vulgar, Hodge. No, my lady. What? Are 
you feeling any better, Mr. Martin? Yes, thanks. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Yeah, what day? Wednesday. Same week? <laughs> yes, yeah, same week. Hadn't you better go home now? They might start worrying about you. Oh, sure. That's a habit with them by this time. <laughs> oh, could I use your phone, Miss Smith, please? Certainly, Mr. Martin. But it's a pay phone. It's down the hall. I haven't any small change right now. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I guess I've got a nickel left somewhere. Oh, say, would you do me a favor and call it the number for me? See, I might get the wrong person. Certainly. What number is it? It's um, Algonquin. Three, four, six, two. Two. Hello? Here he is. Oh, thanks. Hello, Hodges. This is me. Riots and things. Uh oh. Well, tell Mother I'm... I'm in... Where can I be, Hodges? No, no, not the horticultural exhibition. That isn't open at night. Boston? That's a great idea. Yes, tell her I'm in Boston, and uh, I'm... Well, I, I'm writing. I'm writing an historical novel. That's it. Oh, and Hodges, uh, could you manage a suit of clothes for me? Mm-hmm. All right, take them down to the post office and mail them to Boston. What is the address? 614 Prospect Avenue. Thank you, Miss Smith. The address is 614 Prospect Avenue. Right. Goodbye. But aren't you going home? I can't go home like this. Mother would require some very tall explanations. Incidentally, aren't you rather in a hurry to get rid of me? Oh, no. Only I've caused you enough trouble already. Trouble? <laughs> Think nothing of it. I'll bet that judge is sore. You weren't expecting anybody on that corner, were you? No, I wasn't. But I'm not him. Oh, I know, I know. That's all right. I'm not the judge. Oh, please believe me. I was out of work. I was desperate. A man came along and asked me if I could use some money. I was so broke, I said, yes. He was a detective, but I didn't know it. Have you ever been hungry? Only thirsty. You don't believe me? Well, I suppose I shouldn't believe you, but I do. You know, you've got very nice eyes. So have you. Huh? Yeah, I never heard a girl do that before. I mean, crack right back like that. <laughs> That's a great idea. Miss Smith? I approve of you. Why were you in that courtroom? Well, I'll tell you. I was out on a bend, I see. And going to a party, and the taxi got a flat tire right outside the courthouse. So I sort of wandered in and sat down. Why'd you marry me? Just to get you out of a jam. And get divorced right away, you know. Say, you've got a whole kitchen, stove, and everything here. Let's have dinner. All right, but I... Oh, well, sure, I understand. Well, I'll, I'll go to the store and get some. What would you like? Uh, T-bone steak? Salami and dill pickles? And potato chips? Yes, yeah, sure. Kind that don't bend. <laughs> oh, please, have you got a comb? Oh, sure, help yourself. Oh, do you like chocolate eclairs? Yeah, I like the custard ones, not the cream ones. The, say, you don't know what you're talking about. The cream ones are much better. All right, I'll get both kinds. I won't eat the custard ones. So where's my hat? Over here. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just trying to picture their faces when you walk into the delicatessen with that on and ask for a time's worth of potato chips. <laughs> All right. I'll live up to their expectations and order some pâté de foie gras. Oh, and get a can of tomatoes. 
Oh, I don't like tomatoes. Well, you've got to have them before your dinner. You shouldn't drink like that. All right, I'll get them, but cut out the lecture. I'm not lecturing you. Shut up. Oh, say, do you want some coffee? Coffee and cream. Uh-huh. Just notice something. Is that door being open all the time? Sure. Landlady's orders. Why? Because you're here. Well, we're married, aren't we? Well, I didn't tell her that. Why not? I didn't want to get you in trouble. Oh, uh, Miss Smith, I have something to say to you. Are you the landlady? I am. And what's more, wait I... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you ever see a marriage certificate? Certainly. Take a look at that. Well, Miss Smith, why didn't you tell me this before? Oh, I guess she was a little shy about it. You see, I was kind of crocked at the time. Kind of? <laughs> Young man, you are paralyzed. Well, I guess you can close the door now. Um, oh, uh, Miss Smith, um, uh, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Martin. If it is Mrs. What about your rent? Not now, Mrs. Banks, please. Well, how much is it? Eighteen dollars. For this dump? And no baby grand? <laughs> and no light women. Well, I prefer brunettes myself. Yeah. <laughs> the old dragon. Mr. Martin, you shouldn't have done that. You have one bad habit. You will argue. Go and put the water on for the coffee. The dear boy has gone to Boston. He's writing. He's writing an historical novel. Well, at least the subject is dignified this time. But why choose Boston? Well, he's probably writing something about the revolutionary days. One of Mr. Martin's ancestors was at Bunker Hill, you know. Well, it still doesn't sound like Jimmy. Will he be back in time for the dance? Oh, yes. He told Hodges over the phone that he'd be back in a day or two. My dear, I shall be so happy when you and James are married. He needs a steadying hand. Nice fresh violet. Violet. So you see, Hodges, you must take him home right away. He's only being nice to me. I take it that I can speak freely, miss. Oh, surely. Go right ahead. You see, I'm only Mr. Martin's butler. And I take it upon myself to say that we're good friends. You know, he's an odd kind of a person, miss. But awfully nice, Hodges. Oh, yes, miss. You know, I expected to find him with a young woman here. Oh. Oh, please don't misunderstand me, miss. He's not that sort. It's only that they're marrying him off to a young lady. And Mr. James is not keen on the wedding. And so I thought that when he didn't come home, that he'd, uh, uh, well, you know how the boys were during the war, on the last night of the leave. They sort of, uh, well, I dare say you read the papers, miss. Was he going to marry her tomorrow? Oh, no, miss, no. It was only that I thought that he was realizing his impending responsibilities. Is the water boiling yet? Oh, hello, Hodges. Did you bring my suit? Uh, yes, sir, and I brought your roadster, sir. Oh, well, I don't want the car yet. Uh, I'm having dinner here. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, what time would you like the car, sir? Oh, about 11 o'clock. Yes. And Hodges, don't come upstairs. Uh, toot the horn a few times. I'll hear it. Yes, sir. And will you be going home, sir? Oh, no, Hodges. I couldn't get back from Boston in such a short time. I'll stay at an hotel. Uh, very good, sir. And uh, will you pardon me, miss, if I take the liberty of saying it's been a very great pleasure to have met you. Thank you. Goodbye, Hodges. <laughs> you know, I like old Hodges. He gets me out of an awful lot of scrapes. Oh, that was sweet. Mm, I thought you'd like him. Well, Miss Smith, how about dinner? And say, how about cutting out this Miss Smith business? Do you mind if I call you Mary? No, I'd love it. Okay, and how about you calling me Jimmy? Good. Well, come on, then, let's get dinner. I'm famished, as hungry as a wolf. will be here soon. You better be getting ready. 
What's the idea? Are you trying to get rid of me? Oh, no. But he will be here, won't he? Mm -mm. He won't be back for an hour yet. Um. Lovely evening, isn't it? Well, how can I tell with you hogging the whole window? Move over. I will not. Go on, I said. Move over. Oh, pardon me. I, I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. That was no mistake. Come here. Jimmy, get your hat and coat. You have to go. Why? You heard me. You have to go. All right, all right. I'm going. Mary. We are married, you know. Jimmy, now you've spoiled everything. I'm sorry. Really, I am. Well, we wait for Hodges downstairs. He'll be along. Go right away, will you? You gonna kiss me goodbye? No. Yes. No. Yes. I said no. No. Mm. Mm. Jimmy, you've got to go home and never come back here again. I can't go home. I'm supposed to be in Boston. You and Hodges can fix up some story. Well, why can't I go to a hotel? Because I'm afraid you'll come back here again. That's not a bad idea. This can't go on. It, you might get to like me or something. Well, if I did, what then? Well, it just wouldn't work out, that's why. Well, nothing changed your mind? No. Not even if I kiss you again? Oh, no. I, I know better than to let you kiss me again. Oh, all right. I'll go. But first of all, I want you to do me a favor. Well, sure. I'll do anything except let you stay here. Something you won't like. Promise? I'll do anything in the world for you. Hey, wait a minute. That's taking in a lot of territory, you know. Don't you want to insert a weather permitting clause or something like that? Oh, stop acting silly. I promise. Now, what is it? Well, first of all, close your eyes. You're not going to kiss me again. Who, me? All right, I'll close my eyes. Now hold out your hand. Oh, Jimmy, you didn't play fair. Remember your promise. Please go. I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't mean to hurt you. Goodbye. Cream eclairs are much better than the custard ones. Walter, what is the matter with Jane? I'm sure I don't know, my dear. He's been going around like a man in a daze for almost a week now. Several people have commented on it. He's been acting like this ever since he came back from Boston. Well, he seems all right to me, dear. Boston is a very quiet place, you know. Do you mind if we cut this down? No, not at all. What's the matter? Where is? No. How's your novel coming along? What novel? Well, the historical one. 
Oh, there. Oh, not so good. Can't settle down to it. The heroine locks her doors too often. What on earth do you mean? Oh, that's just a figure of speech. Just can't make up my mind about it. I see. Marjorie, you have very pretty eyes. You're not very original tonight. After all, I've heard that before. Didn't work. You like the way I talk? Not particularly, darling. Well, do you prefer cream eclairs or custard eclairs? Are you going crazy? I happen to prefer cream eclairs. Why? Custard eclairs are much better. Have you been drinking? No. Do you think you could bear to lose me for about 33 seconds? Jimmy wants me to rescue him. No, I don't mind. But I think you'd leave your bride on your wedding night if Jimmy wanted you. Well, that all depends. <laughs> oh, Marjorie, I've been looking for you all evening. Well, run along, Jimmy. I'm going to dance with Marjorie. Did it occur to you to ask me? Well, I never ask. It's a waste of time. <laughs> He's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hug it. Yes, sir. Hug it. If anyone asks for me, I've gone away. Uh, very good, sir. Uh, but, but have you thought it over, sir? I've been thinking of nothing else. Uh, but if your mother asks for you, I'm to say that you've gone to Boston again? That's right. Uh, to get material. Uh, for the historical novel, sir. Exactly. Better hurry and get downstairs. Mr. House is on fire. Oh, oh Jimmy, why did you frighten me so? <laughs> it was the only way I could think of to get you to open the door. Jimmy, you've got to start getting a divorce today. You can't go on like this. Oh, stop it. Come on in here. I want to talk to you. I've heard all you have to say over and over. But you haven't heard this before. <laughs> Just exactly how does a man propose to his own wife? Oh, stop it. If you say that again, I'll... Mary, I love you. And if you'll have me, I want to stay around for keeps. Well, come on, answer me. Oh. Mm, don't cry. Jimmy? What? Jimmy? Listen, you've said that twice. It's getting monotonous. I do love you so. I guess I've left you all alone. But you don't love me. I do, too. We began all wrong. It isn't real love. Well, darling, it's the only way I know to be in love. Say that again, will you? What? Call me darling again. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Hello there, Jack. What are you doing here? Why... Oh, by the way, I wanted to meet Mrs. Martin. Mary, this is my best friend, Jack Haynes. How do you do? Anything wrong, Jack? Well, your mother found out that you're married. Hodges phoned me. Told me to come over here and tell you. I'm afraid your mother's on her way over. Are you busy this morning? No, not particularly. Come on in. And sit down. Now, you've got to stay here with Mary whilst I go down and head Mother off. I hate scenes, and at times, Mother can be... 
Well, I'd better go. Oh, I'd be glad to stay. I won't be long, honey. Well, this was quite a surprise. You mean you're surprised Jimmy married? Or are you surprised Jimmy married me? Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Well, I think he showed very good taste. Just a minute, George. I'll talk to Mother. Yes, sir. James, how dared you do such a thing? What time is it? About 12 o'clock. Yeah, five minutes after. He's been gone an hour. I know he's not coming back. Now, don't worry, Mary. He may just be delayed. You're just trying to be kind to me. I know what's happened. Well, you see, they can make it pretty difficult for him. He doesn't come into his money, his own, I mean, for two years. Oh, I, I never thought of that. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, it, it, it made a him. And you? I don't care. You see, I never even thought of it. I love him. Now, now. Don't get too fond of him. Why, only this morning he was telling me he really loved me. But, my dear girl, don't expect too much of him. He's awfully impulsive. Uh, that's the trouble with these idealists. They're always so magnificent. And then just when people begin to get used to their grand gestures, they rush off to be magnificent somewhere else. Very upsetting on the bystanders. <laughs> now, don't cry. Maybe he's coming back. Oh, no, I, I know he isn't. I, I know he isn't coming back. Please don't cry. Well, you make me feel as if it were my fault. Oh, oh Jimmy. I, I've got to go now. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Jack. See you later, Jimmy. Jack just told me about the money. What money? That you wouldn't get any of your own for two years. That does alter things, doesn't it? I suppose so. Well, don't you think you'd better be going? Sure. I should have gone a long time ago. Of course, I'll make a decent settlement on you after the divorce. Well, aren't you going to say goodbye? Mother, I don't see what you expected to accomplish by seeing Mary. I went there with the full intention of trying to buy her off. And did she say she'd accept a settlement? I don't think you need worry about that. The first thing the young lady said to your mother was, did you tell Jimmy this morning that if he stayed married to me, his father would cut off his income? Did Mary really say that the moment you entered the room? Yes, James. Do you mind if I go? Brandon can settle this thing without me. Certainly. But where are you going? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going out. <coughs> Women. Women are all alike. Yeah, but there was my Mamie, as beautiful, as beautiful.
beautiful as a rose. But Raimi, <laughs> why Raimi? She didn't care that for money. Not that. Yes, my Mamie didn't care that. that. That's enough of that. Stop it. Well, my Mamie, she didn't care that. Well, I don't believe in your Mamie. I don't believe in anybody's Mamie. Hey. How many? Yeah, I guess you're right. My Mamie wasn't any better than the rest. Make it two. I just thought of something. Isn't Mamie a nickname for Mary? Sure, sure. Say, I resent that. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. May I come in? Mm, yes, come in. I, I promised to come up this afternoon, but I was delayed, so I came tonight. What for? Well, Mrs. Martin was worried about you. Afraid you didn't have any money. I don't want their money. Well, listen, Mary, don't be mad with me. You understand how I feel about it, don't you? Of course, only, well, how are you going to live? I'll get a job. I've always worked. Well, jobs are pretty hard to find right now. What do you do in the meantime? I don't know, but I don't want money from him. Mary, do you know what you need right now? No, what? A good time. Let me take you out to dinner and we'll dance a bit. How about it? Oh, I don't know. Here. Let me bribe you. Thank you. Did I understand you to say you were coming? Splendid. While you're dressing, I'll run down and get some cigarettes. And hurry up, will you? I don't like to be kept waiting. Well, looks like I'm going out. How much do I owe you? Forty-three dollars. Huh? So this gentleman here. That's no gentleman. It's just a hole in the floor. Thank you. Medicine. Quite young. My Mamie. Just as beautiful as a rose. Ah. Mind if I come in a while? Oh, I don't think you better. I've got to get up early in the morning to look for a job. Don't wait for me. You know, I like you. Like me at all? Yes, why? Well, I was just thinking. You're pretty sure, aren't you, that Jimmy isn't coming back? Yes, I'm sure. I guess I was sure he'd never come back even before he left. Why did you do that? Oh, I guess just because I've wanted to ever since I first saw you. Now, don't be angry, but I'm not pretending that I'm in love with you. I don't believe anyone ever was in love. But I am very fond of you. Jimmy has left you. I don't want you to go to work, and I might be able to... Thanks, I know what you're going to say, but I just couldn't do it. Hmm? I think you better run along now. All right. Let me know if you change your mind.
Go ahead and kiss it. See if I can. <laughs> kiss the whole world. Kiss that cop on the beat. <laughs> I should worry. Hello, Jimmy. What are you doing here? Me? Oh, I, I just came to see if she was going to take that check my lawyer sent her. Well, if you're going up there, you better hurry. I think she's going to bed. Mm-mm. I changed my mind. Hey, you weren't thinking of going back to her, were you? If you were, naturally... Oh, I'll... don't be silly. Don't be silly. What were you doing up there? Oh, I... I just took her out to dinner. Say, she dances marvelously. She does, huh? <laughs> Never danced with her. Hey, come over to Tony's. Let's have a couple, huh? All right. You know, I'm going to take care of her from now on, if she'll let me. Think she will? I think so. We got along famously. And say, Jimmy, that would adjust things nicely all around, wouldn't it? You wouldn't object to that, would you? Hmm. I think it'd be a swell idea. the day I married you. Remember that, hmm? Oh, Jimmy, don't be a care. Now, don't be shy. It doesn't go with your type. Get out of here. Oh, come on. Be nice. Give me a little kiss, will you? Oh, that's all right. You needn't worry. I'll give you some money. Get out of here. I'll... Uh... Well, what will you do? I'll call the police. Go ahead. Call the police. Who cares? <laughs> they can't arrest a man for making love to his own wife. Well, that's great. <laughs> you can fight, huh? You can fight, you can dance, and everything. Come here. Oh, Jimmy, please. Now, it's no good arguing, because I've made up my mind. Does she want more money than the check I gave you? It so happens that she doesn't want any money at all. Are you serious? Quite serious, Mr. Martin. She refuses to accept a penny from you. Listen, Brandon. I'm going to ask you something. And you'd better tell me the truth. Did Mary agree to a settlement when Mother went to see her months ago? Well, if that... Now, answer me. No, she didn't. Did she say at that time that she wouldn't take any money from me at all? Yes, she did. So you lied to me? For your own good. Your mother and I thought if you had known the truth, you might have gone back to her. I ought to sock you in the nose. And I think I will. <laughs> 
Give me Brian. Nine, one, four, eight, six. Hello? Oh, Miss Smith? All right, I'll call her. Oh, Miss Smith? What is it, Miss Bang? You're wanted on the phone. It's Mr. Martin calling. All right, I'll be right down. Uh, oh, Miss Smith, uh, did you see this in the paper? Uh, ain't that the rich young fellow that used to call here a lot? What's the matter, dearie? I didn't mean to upset you. You haven't. You made me change my mind. Mrs. Banks, tell Mr. Martin I don't wish to speak to him now or at any other time. You know how I feel about you. I don't know why you want to take me out. <laughs> oh, just to eat. Some of the best people do it. Jack's dancing with. Yes, yeah, she is charming, isn't she? Just lucky. I believe half the beautiful girls in town have been out with him. Mm-hmm. I knew her myself once. That's not the historical novel, is it? Well, she certainly doesn't look like a night court stray. Surprising, isn't it, that she didn't cause any trouble about the divorce? Oh, shut up. Don't be rude, Jimmy. We're not married yet. I'm sorry, Marjorie. See, I've, I've got a headache tonight. Let's sit down. Surely. Just supporting half the speakeasies in town. Oh, but why does he do it? I don't think he's exactly crazy about marrying Marjorie. Well, then why is he going through with it? He doesn't have to, does he? Oh, well, he rather likes his mother. And she's awfully keen on it. By the way, are you still refusing a settlement from Jimmy's lawyers? Yes, but I'd rather not talk about it. Listen, Mary. I'm awfully fond of you. Thanks. And you know, I might even marry you if you push me far enough. Oh, don't worry. You can stay single. What, what's the matter? I don't know. I feel awful. Take me home quickly, will you? Surely. I'm awfully sorry. I wonder what's the matter with her. She looks as though she's going to faint. Isn't it a bit late for you to be so solicitous? Yes, it is. Oh, wait till I put on my robe. Oh, never mind. That doesn't matter. What is it, sir? Sit down. I want to talk to you. Y yes, sir. Got to talk to somebody or I'll go crazy. Y y yes, sir. You're my friend, aren't you? Well, I've always been honored by thinking so, sir. You've been my friend ever since I was a kid in knee pants. Oh, you were an attractive little chap, sir. Oh, will you let me talk? Y y yes, sir. I want to tell you something awful I did. Something so terrible that I ought to be horsewhipped for it. I was all wrong about Mary. Mother and that Brandon fellow kept me wrong about her. I thought she was after my money. I went there one night, drunk. Well, Hodges, what do you think of me now? Well, begging your pardon, sir, I agree with you. I think you should have been horsewhipped. 
And I think that Miss Smith was quite right. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, sir. I, I'm forgetting my place. Oh, cut this place business, Hodges. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm talking to you now as man to man. Well, as man to man, let me tell you, sir, that I consider your conduct most reprehensible. Now, and, I, and I wish you'd go out now, sir. I can't help it, but I'm terribly angry with you. And she was such a nice girl. Yes, I know, Hodges. She was wonderful. So sweet and pretty. So understanding. A girl in a million. Oh, gosh, Hodges, what'll I do? What can I do? Oh, there, 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 there. Don't take on so. Perhaps something can be done about it. You know the place. One. Yes. When's the feature start? In about ten minutes. We're late tonight. Well, for crying, I must think. Hello. You remember me? Yeah, sure. Hey, say, listen, Bill. Uh, I think the doorman's waiting. Do you want to scramble over there and see what he wants, huh? I'm Nellie Gordon. You remember? I was in court that day that Looney offered to marry you. Oh, yeah. Say, do you know that judge gave me six months? Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Say, listen, how did that thing of yours ever turn out? Oh, gee, I, uh, I guess I pulled a fox pass. I, I wouldn't hurt you for the world. I, I, oh, that's all right, Nellie. I guess I'm just not feeling very well. Oh, it's too bad. Say, you know, I, I'd love to come up and see you sometime. You, you might not believe it, but... I get pretty lonesome sometimes. You know that, that uh, boyfriend of mine sailing tomorrow? Oh, sure. Come up tomorrow afternoon, will you? Oh, I'd love to. I'll give you the address. Well, I'll be there. Hello, Mary. No. May I take you home after the show? No, thanks. All right. A little red riding hood. But here's one wolf that's going to keep howling around your door. <laughs> Goodbye. Gee, how do you do it? Must be swell to a lot of guys like that. <laughs> you know, I wish I... Oh, but give me the Navy any time. <laughs> that guy didn't want to see me for nothing. What's the big idea? He didn't. No. I could have sworn he was waving at you. <laughs> oh, he didn't want nothing. Say, listen. This is my boyfriend, Bill. Bill Casey. Uh, he's a Navy man. Uh, I want you to meet Mr. Uh, Smith. Uh, Smith. Pleased to meet you. Say, I know more girls by the name of Smith. Well, it's still Smith. Well, come on. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Come in. Oh, hello, Nellie. Well, I showed up. Good. Well, my goodness. What the Sam Hill is that thing? It's for a baby. Whose baby? Mine. Oh. My goodness, that's awful. <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but, um, well, it's kind of a, it's a heck of a fix to, well, uh... Pull up a chair, Nellie, and sit down, will you? You look good, anyway. Say, listen, it costs money to have babies. What are you going to do for dough? I don't know yet. You know, I, I, I'd love to help you out, but, gee, business has been awful tough. Well, I mean, with, you know, the depression and everything going on. Oh, sure, I know. Say, that loony did marry you, didn't he? Have you seen him? Well, of course, you must have. I... Well, yeah, I've seen him. You know, I was crazy enough to think it'd last for a while, but... Well, you got marriage out of it, and that makes the kid regular. Say, what are you going to call it? Jimmy. Well, what if it ain't a Jimmy? Gee, never thought of that. Say, you know, you're not going to be able to work much longer, are you? No. I had to quit today. Oh. You know, you might think it's kind of funny, but I, I don't know. I kind of like to stay here and, and uh, help, you know? Be something new for me. I've I, I never been around anything like that before, and I... Well, do you care? Oh, I love it. I haven't been busy anyway, and I mean, I might as well be doing something. <laughs> what kind of a lawyer are you anyway? You can't get her to take some money. I've written her several times, but she never answers. 
Why don't you visit her personally? She might accept something from you. Uh -uh, I can't do that. She hates me. Oh, nonsense. Women of that class forget very easily. You take that back, Brandon, and quick, too. I beg your pardon. Oh, that's okay. We'll call her up right away and see what she says. Certainly. You know, I was just thinking. That guy you married, why doesn't he give you some money? We're divorced now. Besides, this baby's going to be all mine. I wouldn't take a cent from him. Gee, you must be sorry, him. No. I love him. Oh, that's awful. Well, now listen. He's left you. I mean, why don't you try and forget him, or else you're going to be awful unhappy. Now, you can't forget people you love, even if they stop loving you. Yeah. Oh, gee, ain't it tough being a woman? Yeah. Here, Wayne, I'll go. She's tell Miss Smith she's wanted on the phone. Who is it, Miss Bangs? They didn't say. Nellie, will you go and answer it? And if it's Mr. Haynes, uh, tell him I'm not feeling very well and I can't see him for some time, will you? Oh, sure, I'll tell him. What do I say is the matter with you? Uh, appendicitis, huh? Hello, this is uh, Miss Gordon. Miss Smith can't come to the phone. Uh, no, uh, she's, uh, uh, well, she's indisposed. Yeah. What? You want to give her some money? Say, listen, will you hold the phone just a minute? I'll be right back. Oh, listen, there's a lawyer by the name of Brand on the phone. He wants to give you some money. Honest, I'm not fooling. That's Jimmy's lawyer. I've told you already I don't want any money from him. Oh, don't be a fool. You're going to be needing that money pretty soon. Nellie, tell him I don't want it, and furthermore, to stop bothering me. Oh, okay. But, gee, when I think of all the things I've done for less than a thousand dollars, it kind of makes me sick. Well, I can't get shot for trying, anyway. Hello? Well, she can't come to the phone. She's got appendicitis. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. The doctor said just had to take its course. Yeah. But she said she'd take the dough. Uh, well, I mean the money, huh? Oh, no, no, she's, um, uh, she's moving away from here. She's, uh, she's gonna move with a friend until she feels better, yeah. But listen, she wants you to send that money, general delivery, to the post office. Mm hmm In greenbacks. Yeah. Huh? Say, listen, excuse me, mister, but she won't cash a check with his name on it. No. No, that's the only way she'll take it, is in cash. Yeah. Yeah, I'll hold the phone. Some woman there says Miss Smith wants the money sent by mail, all in currency, to general delivery at the post office. Well, what's the idea? She says Miss Smith is unwilling to cash one of your checks. Boy, she sure is mad at me. You don't want me to send $1,000 to a mere general delivery address, do you? I should strongly advise against such proceedings. You advise. Okay, go ahead and send it in what way she wants it and to any place she wants it. I've had enough of your advice. Very well. Yeah? Uh, oh, you're going to do it, huh? How much will it be? What? Oh, mister, I'm going to have to hang up. Something happened. Oh, my goodness. I... Well, you see, it, it's like this, you know. I, I, I want to get $500 of this in small bills. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's kind of for an emergency, you know. And, and then the other $500, I want to put in the bank for the kid. I see. You want to start an account for a child. Yeah, that's it. And uh, what is the child's name? Jimmy. Jimmy? And the last name? Oh, uh, well, I, um, I ain't exactly sure. Uh, you know, he, 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 he's only a, a little tiny baby, and, and he's not old enough to have a, the full name. But, madam, you know, uh, really, I would... Uh... All right, Andy Mellon. His name is Jimmy Smith. Now, listen, it started out to be Jimmy Martin, but then, uh, well, something happened, and uh, he's just Jimmy Smith. That's, that's, that's all right. 
Oh, Mary, have I got good news. What's all the excitement? Well, I was so surprised you could have knocked me over with a feather. Well, what's the good news? Well, uh, don't you remember me telling you about my Aunt Sophie from Alabama? No. You don't remember me telling you about my Aunt Sophie that had the plantation with all the mammies and things on it? And didn't you know my folks were Southern, that I'm Southern too? No. Haven't you ever noticed how I say four instead of four, and when I get all excited, I say you all? <laughs> well, what about your Aunt Sophie? She died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, it's all right. She left 500 bucks, and now we don't have to worry. We've got enough money for the doctor and everything. Oh, but Nellie, I couldn't let you do that. Oh, now, don't be silly. There's plenty of more where that came from. You know, it's kind of one of those estates that they have down south. Oh, take a look at these four checks. Hey, pipe down, you guys. What? Remember that Jane upstairs. The stork's coming. Well, don't look at me. I've never even seen her. Well, pipe down. She might hear you. Well, oh, you look a fresh deal here. Come on, first honest right, deal tonight, right, boys. Come on, Andy, up, everybody. <laughs> Oh, Nellie, they don't stop that noise, I'll go crazy. They've been keeping it up all night. Listen, I'll make them shut up. Decent man I've had tonight. Say, listen, you big palookas. If you don't keep quiet, I'm gonna throw you out of here one by one. Hello, beautiful. Have a chair. Yeah, to crown you with. Say, listen, ain't you got no respect for a mother? That reminds me. I haven't written to my mother for five years. Well, that's a very good idea. Each one of you get a pencil and paper and write your mother a letter. Now, well, come on. What are we gonna say? It don't make any difference, just as long as you put love and kisses on the end of it. Thanks, Nellie. Gee, I must be going crazy or something. Why? What's wrong? You know, I was just thinking, maybe if Jimmy knew about this, it might change him. Oh, I don't know. He's pretty sore at that Haynes guy, and maybe he thinks you're not any good, and he'll probably think the baby doesn't belong to him. Well, I hope it looks like him. Gee, that would be nice. Say, listen, uh, do you want me to go phone him anyway? Oh, no, Nellie. If I am going to see him, I'd rather wait till it's big enough so it'll look nice. Mm. You know, they say they don't look very good at first. Gee, that's funny. My mother said I was beautiful the first day I was born. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll be getting goofy, too, that uh, way soon. Ah, I know you won't. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, Nellie. Oh. Oh, now, don't get excited. Uh, I think you better go and get them. Oh, uh, I, oh, I wonder where I put Dr. Kulinski's telephone number. I put it... Oh, get here. Oh, hurry. Oh, listen. Don't let anything happen till I get back. Oh, gee, I forgot a nickel. Oh, say, mister, would you loan me a nickel, please? Uh, thank you. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, um, uh, Bryant 9, uh, 6842. Yeah. Will you hurry? Oh. Oh, hello. Say, listen, uh, send an ambulance to 614 Prospect. Yeah, and send it fast. And when I say fast, I mean fast. Yeah, Jimmy's on his way. Yeah. Please, God. Will you make it look like Jimmy? You know, dark hair and, and big blue eyes. Ooh, there. You're all polished up just like new now. Come on, here you go. Oh, what a handsome boy you are, Jimmy. Gee, you're good looking. Come on, smile, huh? Say, listen, you know, I want you to be awful good to your mama today. You know why? Because she's awful blue about your old man. Look at that finger in your mouth. Go on with that little finger. What's your own finger? You can do as you want with it. <laughs> Nellie, where's my son? Oh, he's here. And he still has his finger in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you sweet darling. Here he is. <laughs> Did he behave like a perfect gentleman? Yes, and he gained a whole ounce. <clears throat> I got his back. There. <laughs> Oh, I see what that is. Good morning, madam. I'm the Muller Brush Man. Well, just brush yourself right on down the stairs. Stairs. I'd like to leave you a sample of... Oh, scram, scram. Oh, say, did you notice this in the paper this morning? No, what? That boyfriend that used to call here to see Miss Smith so much. Shh. He's getting married today. Say, listen, you two-cent broadcasting station. If you even peep one word of that to her, the only thing you're going to be reading the hospital chart. paper come yet? Oh, no. Do you know that kid didn't bring the paper? Not a single person in the house received one. Maybe the poor little fellow overslept. Yeah, uh, haven't you noticed what a sleepy-looking kid he is? What do you mean by hitting me on the head with the newspaper? I was drying my hair and you threw this paper out of the window. Will you please explain? Shh, don't get excited now, will you? Um... Nellie, I thought you told me the morning paper hadn't come yet. Well, I, uh, um... Listen, uh, you go on, and I'll explain to you later. Go on. Nellie, why'd you throw that paper out of the window? Well, I, um... Well, I was just through reading it. I think I know. There must be something in there you don't want me to see. Give it to me. Oh, now... Now, listen, Mary, uh, there is something I didn't want you to see. Jimmy's being married today. So, what are you going to do? Well, Nellie, quick, get me my clothes, my best clothes. Don't well, stand there looking at me. Hurry, will you? I, I don't know what's wrong with you. Well, listen, tell me, what are you going to do anyway? Well, I've just changed my mind. What am I going to do? No woman's going to marry my baby's father. Oh, I know, but don't you think you'd better wait and kind of... No, don't, don't argue with me. Go down and get Jimmy's address out of the telephone book, will you? And then order a cab and get the baby's blanket. Hurry. Yeah, I... Uh... Oh, now she's going to make a fool out of herself. These darn men make me sick. Poor kid. Be all broken up with her. Finds out you don't want her. Probably forgotten what she looks like, even. The M... Men make me sick because more unhappiness and trouble with Martin Martin. Hmm. You're going to see your father? Yes, sir. I haven't been doing the right thing by you. I'm sorry, I've been thinking only of myself. Why, I'm not going to let that woman cheat you. No, sir, Jimmy belongs to you. Or because I've been acting a little crazy, not even listening to the things that he had to say. But... But I will. Oh, oh, your father. Oh, he's wonderful. Your, yeah, your father, I mean. But drinks a little too much, but we'll put a stop to that. Oh, Jimmy, take your finger out of your mouth. Oh, and, and don't cry today. No, sir, you and I have just got to put this thing over. Well, here's the address, and here's the blanket. I think you're awful silly to be doing this. Oh, no, no, Nellie. I've got to go. I made up my mind now, and I've got to hurry. Well, now, wait a minute. Aren't you going to take the baby? Oh, that's so excited. I forgot the baby. Stick it in here. Oh, come on, darling. Oh, don't drop it. Oh, all right. I'm so excited. Oh, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, well... Wait a minute. Did you order a cab, lady? Yes, and I want you to break every speed record that's ever been broken. Well, I can sure do that. This baby's father's gonna marry some other woman, and I've got to stop it. Here's the address. You're practically there now, lady. <laughs>
I'll get him. Mary. Jimmy, this is ours. Isn't he lovely? Oh. <laughs> Jimmy, hey, take your finger out of your mouth. Have you got... Oh. The, oh, the baby, I mean. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, you couldn't have been so mad at me, Mary. You named the baby after me. He's kind of like me, too, don't you think? Do you, James Martin, take this woman, Mary Smith, for your lawful wedded wife? I do. 